Hey, what's up guys? I just got back from class and the gym and I just wanted to start this day two of the antelope hunting uh, video off with addressing some people's comments on day one. Uh, just so you know, some people will always jump to defend the hunter. Now I get it, you, the other hunter you know that I complained about that ruined my full draw experience on opening morning. Now, I understand some people no matter what they want to do in life is just disagree with somebody. You can disagree with me, that's fine. I don't care if you agree with me or you disagree with me. But here's the thing, you weren't there and you don't know the full situation, so let me just fill you in on it real quick. Now, no doubt, if this hunter just drove up and I was so camouflaged and just buried in the ground that he didn't know I was there and he had no time to figure that out, Fine, you're right. It's He didn't know I was there. It's not his fault. You can see my blind in this desert from a whole road away. You can turn off. If you were trying to actively set up a blind and hunt that water hole, you would, you would look down to the water hole with your binoculars. You'd see the water hole, see what's on it, and see my blind. And then you can make the move to either go in and stalk the antelope on the water hole whatever go see oh there's a blind there maybe i will go mess up that girl's hunt maybe i won't whatever the thing is that you could see my blind from very very far away so to all the people that were like how was he supposed to know you were there well it's opening morning there's a blind on the water hole you can see it oh my food's done you can see it with plenty of time before driving in and ruining my hunt um by the time he's seen my blind he could have stopped and still successfully, without a doubt, not ruined my hunt. But he chose to keep going, um, despite the fact that he saw my blind, saw my setup, saw everything, and it was on opening morning. Like I said, you don't have to agree with me or disagree with me. I'm just telling you how it is. Another thing, one of the most dramatic comments was a guy that was like, maybe he works two jobs, maybe his uh, kid can't walk, blah, blah, blah. First of all, you're being really dramatic. Stop it. <laughs> like, calm down. Second of all, his kid can walk. His kid was fine. Now, I am a full-time student. Right now, I don't have three jobs, but I've been the person that's a full-time student and worked three jobs. I've worked two jobs. I've worked full-time and been a full-time student and still hunted and fished. I've done all of those things. And I know that if you care about something, no matter how busy you are, I don't care if you got a bunch of kids, got a bunch of school credits, got a bunch of jobs, you find a way to get things done. If you care about hunting and you work two jobs and have a family and go to school full time and you can't make it happen, then you go out and you set that blind in the middle of the night, 10 days before the hunt, because that's when it's legal. If you can't do it any other time, go do it in the middle of the night. Everyone always has time. You make time. You have all summer. All right. There's no excuses here. I'm not wanting a pity party. I'm just telling you the way it is. And even after the whole thing was done and I came out of my blind and confronted him, um, he still decided to not be very polite about the situation. So that's just the way it goes. That being said, go ahead and enjoy day two of my antelope hunt. And it's day three, actually. Okay? Enjoy it. Brookie says enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks to all you guys that always have my back. I'm not the person to ever comment negatively or lash out at anybody on social media, so the fact that people do it is pretty funny to me, but there's so many of you positive people that have my back and support me, and it means a lot. So thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy it.
Hey guys, it's now five o'clock on day two of the hunt. I've spent the entire day in my blind and I'm super, super bored and low energy just from not eating and drinking a lot and just bored because there's nothing out there. It was storming and stuff. Um, it's a lot cooler today and I really don't know how the antelope are gonna react. They're definitely um, hitting my cameras more in the morning so I don't even know if they're gonna come in at all tonight but you never know, that's the uh, the beauty of blind hunting. Something could come in that I've never seen before. No antelope this morning. It's actually really, really hot. I look so tired. Um, it's so hot. It's 11 o'clock now. Nothing's come in, so. I think I'm gonna go to the other blind and check the other camera, see what action is going on over there. Okay, so I just checked the other camera using this stealth cam quick check memory card thing. And there's no antelope on it, um, just one deer and there's barely any water left, so makes me think it's just a matter of time. They're all gonna have to start going where I'm going because I don't think there's any water anywhere else at all. So I really hope they come during shooting hours, you know, when I'm in the blind, when I'm ready to go. And I really hope it happens soon because today's Friday, we're getting into the weekend, that makes me nervous. Um, I don't want to have to deal with other people and I go back to school on Monday So I'd really like to get it done before then if not I can still hunt on days I don't have class, but it's a long drive. It's really super boring out here. It's just desert. There's nothing to do Not my style so much. Uh, I do like hunting in the desert But I'd rather hunt the desert where there's no roads and there's so many roads out here people driving around makes it hard to be successful I'm still super bummed after my opening day experience. Um, I can't help but think, I, I just know hunting and you don't get those opportunities so often. Those opportunities are very hard to come by. And I was at full draw ready to go, just waiting for him to put his head down or give me a good shot and I was ready to shoot. And um, that truck and that guy with his kid totally blew my opportunity at the exact perfect moment. and. I'm kind of heartbroken about it, kind of really angry about it, and kind of bummed. It just totally sucks, you know, but, oh well. Put yourself in my shoes, you know, all that work, everything, sleeping in the blind, misery. Just to have some guy pull up and ruin it because he decides to scout opening morning. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Those were slow couple days. Um, looking back, I could have shot that doe, but it really isn't like me to shoot a loner doe like that that has a fawn um not really my thing but and also i would rather get a buck i'd still be grateful with the doe but the fact that she was so skinny and had a little fawn that's why i decided not to shoot her um we're gonna be moving in today's four and five and so on in the next couple videos i don't know for sure if i'm gonna post them tomorrow definitely gonna post some video tomorrow so stay tuned for that but like I said before, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the antelope hunting video so far, days one, two, and three. Just so you know, I am filming my elk hunt, which I've been working hard on since opening day, which was the last day in August. I'm gonna do my best to film and shoot and share a video a day for the elk hunting series. It's been really tough so far. The elk aren't quite talking yet, but even though it's tough, it's still been super, super fun. Getting outside and chasing elk every day is really, really fun. Uh, they're very much nocturnal at this point. It's been really hot all over a lot of the Western states. And you also have fires to deal with. They're not making it easy. I've talked to a couple people all over different Western states and they're all kind of saying the same thing. It's too hot, they're not running yet, blah, blah, blah. So every time that I come back for school and then go back to elk hunting, I just personally believe it's just gonna get better and better and better because the elk are gonna start talking, they're gonna start running, it's gonna cool down in temperature. It's just gonna get better and better. And I've been shooting my bow, I'm super locked in, I'm ready to go, ready to harvest an elk. I, it sounds so funny, but like one of the things I crave most about harvesting an elk is a long, heavy pack out. <laughs> I know they're not so fun, but to me it's like that is the most rewarding thing. Like if you have a long, tough, heavy pack out, 
it means you were successful and you put the work in and that's your reward. That's what you go home with and you put straight in your freezer and you feed yourself for a very, very long time. And yeah, so I just love it. I'm so excited for a good old pack out, make my legs sore, I would love that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that all of your hunts are going well. Um, go ahead and let me know if you've been actively hunting or if you're waiting for maybe a season down the road, let me know what you're hunting and where. That would be super cool, what state, whatever. Um, I am kind of bad at getting back to comments. I'm trying to be better, but I do read and see all of your comments. So thanks for doing that, guys. We'll see you next time.